Just when you thought you knew everything there is to know about your dog, you find out how your old pooch actually is. And have you ever wondered why he scoots his butt across the floor? Because he's not well behaved, right? Not exactly. Find out the truth about these dog myths and more in this video. But scooching dogs are bad. So you bought a new carpet, and this is what your pup does on it. How do you react? Bad dog, right? Well, no. It's a common misconception that dogs who scoot their butts across the floor are not properly trained. To many of us, this looks weird when a dog does this, and maybe even funny. However, this behavior has nothing to do with your pup not having any manners. But actually, 99% of the time a butt scooting canine means that your dog has a health problem. It can either be parasites or the animal's anal glands are full. This indicates your dog needs to be treated ASAP by a vet. Next time Rover does this on the carpet, make sure to have him checked out. Dog Poop Fertilizer Another outrageous myth about dogs is that their poop is supposed to be good for fertilizing plants. Not only is this myth untrue, but it has been scientifically proven that dog poop does just the opposite for your garden. While cow poop is a great fertilizer for plants, dog poop should not by any means be used for this purpose. The reason for this is that the diet of a dog is very high in proteins, resulting in very acidic feces, which is not a suitable environment to grow plants. Dog Fashion You've probably seen dogs walking around wearing shoes and other types of dog clothing. While dog fashion has become a thing amongst passionate dog owners who like to dress up their dogs, dog fashion is not just fashion. When taking out your pup for a walk in very hot or very cold weather, dog shoes actually do help keep their paws protected. I'd like to see you walking barefoot on the sidewalk or street while it's very hot out or really cold. In addition to dog shoes, ponchos or other types of dog clothing also help keep your furry four-legged friend warm during the colder days. It is also commonly believed that a dog's cold, wet nose is a sign of good health. This is also a myth. Though a dog has a moist nose most of the time, his sniffer naturally changes from wet and cool to warm and dry several times during the day, depending on his activities. Most times a dry nose is completely normal. It could mean your dog has woken up from a nap near a heater or he might have slept in the sun and just needs a bit to drink. If your dog's dry nose looks concerning and he is actually sick, you'll immediately notice a change in his daily routine, activity, and appetite. These are better indicators that will help you sniff out the real problem. A dog's mouth is cleaner than a human's. There also seems to be a misconception about how clean a dog's mouth is. Some believe it is even cleaner than a human's. The mouths of both humans and dogs harbor a lot of bacteria. Dogs don't brush their teeth. They sometimes eat out of the litter box or garbage bin, and you know exactly where else they put their mouth. These should be strong enough reasons to debunk the myth of a dog's mouth being clean. But if you're still not convinced, you should also know that 80-90% to 90 of dogs over 3 years of age have some form of periodontal disease in their mouth. Surely something to consider before you let your dog lick your face the next time. A dog's saliva has healing qualities. Because dogs tend to lick their wounds, it is assumed that a dog's saliva has healing qualities. However, it is not necessarily the saliva that speeds up the healing process. By licking its wounds, a dog is actually trying to remove dirt, debris, and any unwanted foreign objects. But remember, a dog's mouth is full of bacteria. So letting them lick their wounds actually delays the healing process and can even cause an infection. It's better to prevent them from doing this by wearing a special collar around their neck. A sleepy dog yawns. When a dog yawns, it may look as if he's about to take a nap or that he's bored. But unlike humans, dogs don't yawn because they're sleepy. They tend to yawn for different reasons. By yawning, a dog is actually preparing its body for an action. When a dog yawns, the lungs fill up with air, which boosts the flow of oxygen to the brain. This will also cause the dog's heart to beat faster. When a dog yawns, he can be excited and is waiting to do something. But it can also be an indicator for anxiety and stress, which is almost always accompanied by other forms of tense body language, like flattened ears or wide eyes. Dogs also yawn when they're confused, and they yawn to let other dogs know that they do not feel threatened. Fun fact, dogs are susceptible to human yawns. Go ahead, give it a try with your pooch and see if it works. Food will motivate any dog. So, you're trying to teach Rover a new trick, but he's not responding to a treat. This doesn't mean your dog is untrainable, it just means your dog gets motivated by other things. 
Not all dogs can be trained using a snack as a motivator. For some dogs, mainly those who get enough nutrition from their daily diet, it takes more than a few kibbles. Things like toys, praises, or just some quality time with their owner will get them excited. Some dogs are really smart and even capable of warding off a treat because they know that something better might be in store. More baths are better. Ah, there's nothing nicer than cuddling up with a freshly bathed puppy. You might even think that frequent baths would be better for your dog. However, this isn't necessarily true. Vets even warn against it. It might seem logical that the only way your dog smells clean is if he takes more baths. That may be true, but eventually it can become a problem. It's really not recommended to soak your pup daily or even once a week. Doing this causes dry skin, an oily coat, or dandruff, resulting in other hygienic issues. While the frequency of washing may be different for each dog, a good rule to follow is giving Rover a bath every four weeks. This will not only maintain a clean skin and coat, but will also allow the natural oil of the skin to spread out for better conditioning. Dogs eat grass for a reason. Your beloved pooch isn't a cow, so it might come as quite a surprise when you see him eating grass like one. You might even be worried. No one is certain why dogs eat grass, but there are several theories for the odd behavior though. Some people believe it's to relieve a stomach ache. Some think it's to help them throw up when they feel sick. And the other theory is that dogs just like the taste of grass. However, there is really no scientific evidence to back up these theories. For whatever reason your dog is munching on the lawn from time to time, the odd behavior is really not a problem. Just make sure the grass your dog eats is not treated with pesticides. Rescue dogs are bad. The most sad myth about dogs is that rescue dogs are bad because you just don't know where they came from, right? And there must be a reason why the dog is unwanted. Not only is this myth so far from the truth, but it also diminishes the chances for a rescue dog to be adopted from the get-go. Rescue dogs can be aggressive, but most of the time this is because they weren't properly trained or even worse, they were poorly treated. But even when raising puppies, there's no guarantee that they won't be aggressive. In general, any dog who doesn't receive proper socialization training can be aggressive, so try to give a rescue dog a chance the next time you decide to get a dog. Once a dog bites, it's the end. Many dog owners assume that once a dog has bitten someone, it means it's time to put the pooch to sleep. The dog becomes a liability and cannot be trusted again. It's understandable that no one actually wants to euthanize their dog. And really, no one has to either, because aggression in dogs is a very treatable problem. Every case is different, so it's important to get some professional help. A veterinary behaviorist can help determine what caused the dog to bite in the first place and how to prevent it from happening in the future. Most of the time, a dog will resort to biting when it feels threatened, not just because he feels like it. No hiding. It is also widely believed that many dog owners won't allow their dog to hide behind them when they're afraid. The dog is then forced to come out of hiding and has to face his fears. But this actually causes more damage to your dog's mental health. It will negatively affect your relationship with your dog as your pooch will develop trust issues. So if you want to help your canine overcome its fears, it's better to patiently work with them to gradually desensitize them to this fear. Using proper dog training methods is a must. One year is not seven human years. Let's say it's your dog's fourth birthday and you want to celebrate it with a doggy cake. How many candles do you need? Popular belief claims that one dog year equals seven human years. So, does this mean you need 28 candles? Well, not exactly. This generalization is actually not true and the math is not that simple. According to a study from researchers at the University of California San Diego School of Medicine, a method was discovered to calculate the actual age of dogs. By tracking molecular changes in DNA and changing methyl group patterns in the genome, they are able to tell the age of a dog. Based on this calculation, a one-year-old dog is comparable to a 30-year-old human, while a four-year-old dog is comparable to a 52-year-old human. Dogs just age at a rapid pace compared to humans, especially when they're young. That's why a nine-month-old dog can have puppies. They age much faster than we do. However, their aging slows down around their seventh year. So next time you celebrate your dog's birthday, take a minute to realize how old he actually is and how lucky you are to still have him with you. Which of these dog myths was new to you? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and until next time.